Hi, welcome back to Two Sounds on Pack. Today we're doing our long-term review of the Bugod EX30. Now this took a little bit longer because Christine had an accident and therefore it took her some time to remember her opinions and her feelings about this wheel. But without further ado, let's get to it. Let's start with the stack. So this wheel is 134 volts. The battery size is 3600 watt hours. The tire diameter is 20 inches. The motor power is 4000 watts. The free spin speed is 120 kilometers per hour. Our unit weighs about 110, 112 pounds. However, if you remove all the Grizzly prettiness and pads, it weighs around 100 pounds. And lastly, the suspension travel inside is 100 millimeters. Let's start with the physical stuff. The build quality of the EX30 is really good. Now, this wheel has been in an accident. One of the, our friends who rode, borrowed our wheel got into an accident with the vehicle, and it's actually fared pretty well. There's a bit of damage on the battery packs, but other than that, the wheel still runs and works as it should. Uh, the wheel is quite rigid with the metal battery backs because it does provide a lot of structural aspect to it. The kickstand is good, but only because of the Grizzly kickstand pads that we've added to it, which give it a little bit more uh, wider base to stand on and therefore more rigidity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is one of the first wheels I'll say that it's predominantly made of metal. So yes, you do sacrifice a bit of weight, but the wheel is almost built like a tank. Mm -hmm. And if you want more protection, you can get this uh, Grizzly bumper and fairing. This just add an extra layer of protection to it. And it has protected it a lot. So if you mm -hmm. look at the Grizzly, there's a little bit of wear here, a little Fine. bit of wear there. All the corners Bumper, have a bit of damage. Especially under the battery box. Under the battery box, we've mm -hmm. bonked it a couple times. It's held up really, really well. Also the pads, you can see it, it took a big brunt of the damage when it falls on the side. Um, so if you're looking to protect your EX30, I will say with 100% certainty that if we did not have these, our seat would not be in one piece. Let's start with the trolley handle. This trolley handle, as you can see, it's same as other Bugol wheel, but I don't quite like it because the weight of the wheel and the size of it, the trolley handle cannot really handle it properly. And when she says that, what she means, so the trolley handle is mounted in the oh. perfect position for a trolley handle, which is the middle of the axle, gives you the best control. But what happens is the way that Big O's done it, there's a bit of play. And this side-to-side -side play doesn't look like a lot. But when you go to use the trolley handle, sometimes it can add an extra bit of dead zone near the top, which therefore makes it a little bit harder to manage. I think it will be better if you're just using the short... If like the trolley that. handle is just lower. Yeah, but then the trolley handle is like this. It's a little bit too low to use. It feels more stable in that way. It is more stable, but then it's harder to because you've got to reach lower. That's true. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to the screen, the screen is fairly bright. Um, also, all the digits are the same color. And so you can do a simple modification to your wheel. I'll leave the link below to give it different colors, just so when you glance down, you can see exactly what you're looking for fairly quickly. Uh, another thing is the battery meter is not very accurate. Therefore, just we showing added, the bar it just shows five mm -hmm. bars and the five bars does not correlate to 20% per bar mm -hmm. as we would imagine. Uh, so adding the voltage meter at the top was a huge benefit. And with the EX30, it's actually quite simple. So this seat is a very wide base and it is quite comfortable. It does have a really good angle at the back, which allows you to really scoot your rear end towards the back of the wheel to get more braking power while seated. Uh, we did have the Grizzly Tall Seat included as part of our Ultimate combo. However, we found, although the seat is very plush, we found mm -hmm. that to be too tall for our liking because we're not that tall to begin with. Yeah. So we've lived with it without that tall seat and we've donated that seat to another local rider. Um, in terms of the control and everything on top of the seat, it is really comfortable. I've had mm -hmm. zero complaints with it. Even with the handlebar, it doesn't really affect you. So underneath the handlebar is our charge port. It does have a very good rubber cover on it. And especially it's under the handlebar, it's locked in inside. So it, when you're riding, it's not easy to pop out. So the wheel stock through the charge board can do 12 amps of charging, roughly 12 amps, sometimes 12 and a half, sometimes a little bit under 12. 
uh, which is fairly quick, which is basically correlates to around a four hour full charge. When we were testing the headlight, the headlight has a really good throw. Uh, it's also really distributed very well. So from the center outwards, uh, there's no sharp break cutoff lines. Mm -hmm. The only thing I will say is that it does not go wide enough. And one of the things that I think the good could really improve on is since they already have the four lens on the front and they could just angle two of the lens towards each outwards angle, uh, you can get a much wider throw, which will make it a lot easier in trails and in nighttime riding. Mm -hmm. So with the tail light, there is a thing that I like a lot is there is colorful, heart beating, or breathing rhythm to it. Uh, it does have the braking light and the turn signal. And because the tail light's fairly big, it actually is really apparent and therefore it's very easy for other riders and other road users to see. So zero complaints on the tail light. Although the metal battery box provides really, really good structural rigidity as well as protection for the battery packs, as we've all seen, it's very hard to stick stuff on them. Mm -hmm. So Velcro tends to come off fairly easily. Now, a local rider tipped us off to this solution that he came up with, and I've been using it on the EX30 Pro build that I have, mm -hmm. and it's worked out quite well. So if you, take, if you go to your local hardware store and you purchase some Gorilla branded duct tape, has to be Gorilla branded. Has to be Gorilla branded. Get the widest roll you can find. Uh, I believe our roll is two inches, three Almost inches maybe. three inches, yeah. And you can make strips. So what I did is I made vertical strips from the top to the bottom of the pack. And then I've laid the Velcro horizontally. And since doing that with the Master or the EX30 Pro, I haven't had a single issue with mm -hmm. the Velcro coming off my wheel because the Velcro adheres very well to the Gorilla tape and the Gorilla Tape adheres well to the battery pack. So if you want to do a more budget solution, that is a very good solution that you can do without feeling forced to buy a fairings plate. Mm -hmm. However, if you do get a fairing plate, the Grizzly fairing is a really good plate. It is held on on all four sides by the inner fairing guard filler plate, as well as the bumpers. And therefore we've had zero issue with this coming off the wheel. And as you all can see, we're not using the Bugo pedal here. We swap it to the Extreme Bold CNC pedal. Yeah. This pedal we swapped on during Northwest Electric Fest because it has much more spikes, has much better spikes uh, for more traction with my foot in the middle of a race. These stock pedals, as we've seen, can be quite fragile. And we broke a couple of them already. And the nubs on there are, on there are far and few between, uh, mm -hmm. so it does leave a lot to be desired. Now, if you have a set of old honeycomb hex pedals, those are great, just a little bit heavier. Yeah. So when it comes to the tire, it does come with a stock CST knobby tire. Now on every other wheel, Master, T4, not maybe not T4, Master, and all these other wheels that they came out with, that tire was not the greatest. It mm -hmm. would dip and it's hard to recover and it just didn't feel very intuitive. However, I have to say on this rim, the CST tire does work and I've never felt like I was fighting the tire. From our last couple of Calgary vlog videos, you could see that this wheel has gone through quite a bit of a uh, rainy season. Yeah, we got caught in the rain. We got caught in the hail. I probably rode two or three days of really heavy rain and we haven't had any issues with bearings or water in the control board or anything along those lines. So if you wanted to see if this wheel could be a good commuter wheel or like a one wheel for your household and not have to worry about oh, is it going to rain today or is it, is it going to get water damaged? In inclement weather, I have zero concerns about any water damage on this wheel. Yeah, but not saying you should pressure wash your wheel. Not and saying not going into the river like the A2. You can't ride like an A2 inside the lake. But in terms of just normal use in inclement weather, you'll be totally fine. Okay, let's talk about the performance. Tell us something about the firmware. So... Begoat actually just released this new firmware and it allows you to change between race mode and off-road mode. Now race mode was actually a really godsend for this wheel because it made the wheel way easier to ride, way easier to accelerate and way more responsive. However, with the race mode, there is a little bit of pedal softness and that pedal softness is in the hardest mode. So for those who ride in trails and who want that hard pedal and better torque response, Begoat has made the ability to swap or to change your setting just by going through the app. 
and that is a godsend because now you don't have to choose one or the other or have to firmware update back and forth. Mm -hmm. But the biggest two other features that they came out with, firstly, is the PWM tilt back, which allows you to set your power alarms, but not just alarms anymore. It's able to tilt back the pedals so that you know that you're in a danger zone. Secondly, Bigode pedals are known to dip during turns. And instead of just getting rid of the dip, Bigode took it one step further and gave us a setting that allowed you to choose how much dip you want or how much pedal raise you want. So those who like the dip can keep it. Those who like it flat can get it flat. And those who want a little pedal raising can get pedal raising going on. So it's a really, really good piece of firmware that they released for the masses. How fast did you go on the EX30, Christine? My top speed on the EX30 was 70. 70? That's pretty I good. I think I could go faster, but I was so comfortable riding it, so confident. I didn't notice it. And then I looked down. <gasps> 70! So I pulled back right away. <laughs> so if I didn't look down, then I might go a little bit faster, but it's so hard to notice it. It's just so easy to ride. This wheel does, it make, does make it very effortless to go high speed. Now, if you're wondering at what speed does the first beeps come in, I usually hit the first beeps around the 86 to 87 mark kilometers per hour. Um, and that's when the 80% beeps come on and I pull back because I'm not one to ride the beeps. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the range. So it does have a big battery and typically with big battery means you do get a lot more range. But the flip side to that is the fact that this wheel is so fun to ride and it really pushes you to go faster. So when I'm riding naturally by myself and the wheel is kind of eking me to go faster and faster, the thing that comes and ruins the ride is the range. So at those spirited speeds, I get about 60 to 70 kilometers of range. And then I have to figure out how to charge. Whereas for Christine, I'm not a speed demon. So how I just want to chill. And I was able to get a hundred kilometer out of 70% of the battery. So with a full battery, I can get around 130, I guess. That's so that good. is at around the speed of 30 to 40, maybe a 40 kilometer per hour. Average the speed. average speed, yes. Now, when we first got this wheel, I was really concerned in the back of my head about stairs because I was really concerned about hitting the kickstand on stairs. Mm -hmm. And I'm really happy to say that I've Nashi never had that issue. So we went down a bunch of stairs, even Aaron went down a bunch of stairs, mm -hmm. and not one person has reported to me that they have knocked their kickstand on the stairs. So I don't know if that's a batch one thing that they already fixed, or whether it's just an issue that was blown out of proportion. I have no problem with stairs either, but only I need a longer runway, because this thing is so heavy and I need some more distance for me to stop. On the bad side though, I will say that when I'm riding this in trails or when I'm trying to go up curbs, there are more than a couple of times where I've hit the front of the battery boxes bonking up a curb. So that's mm -hmm. something to keep in mind as well. I did not have that problem. But again, because you're heavier. Yeah. So the wheel gets lower. Now, when it comes to acceleration, Christine, do you find it hard to accelerate, easy to accelerate? And it's Easy to accelerate, easy to mount, and easy to stop, and easy to dismount. It looks so big and heavy, but that is a point that surprised me. I just step on it and go. With the torque that this thing has, it accelerates with so much ease. Even between a normal intersection, I could easily get up to 60 or 70 kilometers an hour mm -hmm. with a blink of an eye. And for most of the riders that I've spoken with, they get up to speeds without even knowing it and they look down and usually they shock themselves about mm -hmm. how fast they're That's going. That's exactly what happened. But of course you do need a couple of days in the beginning to get used to all the weight for your legs to build on muscle. Yeah. Once you've gotten used to the wheel, it is a dream to ride on. How do you feel about the wheel and trails? No? Speechless. Not in a good way at all. To me, this is... <laughs> like a mountain <laughs> like it's so heavy like in a green trail like gravel path just a tiny bit of roots yes it can cut 
take over everything. You don't feel it. But once you get a little bit more technical, no way I can control this. It's so hard to turn, especially in trails. It's not a, when you do a sharp turn or hairpin, you cannot just lean into it. You need a lot of twisting to it. And I just don't have that strength to twist it. Now, on my side of the story, the wheel is maybe less than half of my weight. So I found it to be perfectly agile, not a problem turning and twisting. Uh, torque, bountiful. I could climb mm -hmm. grades that I could never climb before on other wheels. But the only thing that you have to be careful with is two things. One is the wheel does have a lot of weight, so which means there is a lot of momentum. So if you take this wheel on jumps or you bonk something, there could be a lot more upwards momentum than you expect. Secondly, because it is heavy and because I'm heavy, I always have this concern in the back of my head that the suspension might break. It's an air shock. Because the air shock is not that strong and is actually quite fragile. And so I'm very scared of breaking it. And as I look into the fender now, I can see oil leaking onto the inner mudguard, <laughs> which means it's probably on its way out soon. I rode this wheel at Northwest Electric Fest for my race, and it has a really, really good stability for plowing through things at really high speeds. But the things where it came short at is the bonking, the tight turns in the forest, mm -hmm. because it was a lot of, really a lot of weight to yes. kind of throw around. Um, but I will say that on the flip side is that this wheel, in combination with the C40 motor, gave me so much confidence to lean at the start line that I was out leaning my competitors and out accelerating them. Now, when it comes to high speed, there are a couple times where I get caught off guard and I get reminded of reality. Because this wheel is so fun to ride all the time, sometimes you don't notice the lack of performance at lower batteries. And so you just kind of cruise around and zip around in urban environments. There are more than a couple times where I've kind of pushed it a little bit harder than I should have and then realized that I was a little bit lower on the battery scale. And <laughs> when the pedals dip, I have to say this is one of the, the 134 volt wheel. It's one of the easiest wheels to recover uh, when it does dip. So Christine, mm -hmm. who would you recommend this wheel for? So if you just want a wheel that's for city riding, simple trails, and you have the strength to control it, you're a bigger human, bigger than me, then this is a wheel for you. But if you're like me, you just want a wheel that takes you around the city, you can go long range, again, this is a wheel for you. But if you want a trail wheel or jumping wheel, no, not this one. To add to that, if you did want a jumping wheel or you just you can only have one wheel and you want to do, do everything mm -hmm. there are things that you can do like upgrading the suspension to make it a better jumping wheel but it will never be the best jumping wheel it's just so heavy it's very heavy yes so um but if you're if you're looking for a one wheel to rule them all or you're looking for that all around like i mostly do urban but i want a little bit of trails here and there like i'm mainly a group ride rider this wheel is absolutely perfect and it nails all the boxes. If you're a long range cruiser, just know that you can get about 100 kilometers of range. And if you're a trail rider, I'm pretty sure there's other more extreme options that you can pick. <laughs> so if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And you may also turn on your ding dong ding dong to receive notification of our latest content. See you in our next video. Bye.